Baltic countries like Germany, Belgium, England, Sweden, uh, Spain. All of these little countries have sort of a pair, a big sister that has been dominating the history and dominating the way how the, the industry has been developed. And after, after these talks, uh, I started to look the history of Finnish industrialization by the, with the focus of, of these ideas. And I found a very strange thing. Uh, the first industrial plants in Finland were actually funded by the state. <coughs> Earlier, really, uh, no one had understood this because we were talking about men who came from England and men who came from Britain and so on. But when I went to the histories, personal histories of our founding fathers uh, of our industry, I found out they are from Edinburgh and from Glasgow. To understand a bit what I am reaching after, I'm creating sort of a research program, perhaps I hope I will to be able to start that next year uh, about the attitude in, in the peripheral Europe uh, towards the history of industrialization. I must tell you who we think we are, uh, who we think we are. In fact, we are the last place in Europe that the people were baptized. There was quite a lot of pagan people still in, in during the 18th century. My own name, name one, I always tell the people in Europe that it comes from Urbans, really do not, I am, I am the uh, god of the sparkle, the spirit, the knowledge that comes from the very ancient poems in, in our history. My grandmother was still a person who was looking into the forest, looking for other elves and uh, fairies and telling her stories like uh, don't go into this part of this uh, forest, there is a stone and something happens if the children there and so on. Uh, our ancient history is not that far away uh, even today. We have always been fighting against all the world, against Vikings, the Russians, Germans, and so on. Uh, we are not Vikings. There is a part in the western part of Finland that is known that, that we want to the Viking, Vikings world. But the Finland, Finland has always been an independent kingdom up, up to the 14th century. Something happened in 13th century. We do not know what. Most of the population vanished from the kingdom of Finland. Most probably the best risk uh, is that the Black Death arrived through Moscow to Finland earlier than to the Western Europe. Uh, usually it is believed that the, the Black Death came to Venice and, and Italy and then to France and Finland during 1347 but it, it seems like it has been in Finland a few decades earlier and that might be the reason why the Kingdom of Sweden was able to take over the uh, This is the picture of how we see ourselves. It is a very blonde young lady who is going to the Western world and smiling. This is the picture I love the most from, from the medieval times. This is the map from uh, Olaus Magnus, published in 15. Uh, 39, and uh, in fact, this is a quite good picture of what happened in Finland before the modern times. Uh, we don't have a uh, In the western part of Finland, you can see the troops of the Kingdom of Finland attacking the Russians, and over the uh, western part of Finland, uh, the reindeers are attacking to Sweden. And then there are some snakes, groups of snakes in land that are eating all the strangers coming in. <laughs> we have always welcomed everybody. Uh, the civilization is somewhere here in the south of part of Scandinavia, and here, of course, you can see the Scotland. 
This is the world as we saw it in, during the 16th century. There is a difference in what we do in the, uh, when our artisans uh, or our designers are doing something. You can at once make a difference between the piece of art made in Sweden, in Denmark, or in Finland, because we have had always a very hard nature. Uh, we have never had precious methods, no code. It is in our national anthem. It says that if you deserve for precious metals, don't come to Finland or somewhere else. I don't know any such positive national anthems in the world. But it really is in the We have now a mining industry that is a very huge one, but it has started only after the 1920s. Uh, there has been a lack of resources, lack of personal. Of materials. And perhaps because of that, from the iron age on, everything we have done is pretty functionalistic. It is not so fancy. We are uh, saving materials, we are saving uh, work. And uh, the result of these things like this is the subtle uh, ways from 1939 to in New York. Made by Albert Hall, very <laughs> And uh, then we have this uh, one thing that makes a difference between the Finnish people and the uh, other people in the world. We have this culture of silence. I, I think there might be a possibility that the Scottish people understand what, what I am talking about. Uh, if you are saying something, the responsibility to get the, to receive the message is on the listener. Not the person to speak. My mother, my grandmother, was one of these people. He might be silent for three days and then he said one word. <laughs> two words. There is too much sound in the school. <laughs> Sometimes it is very funny. Uh, we had a group of American colleagues visiting Helsinki and uh, there was only one person to uh, said to be a guide of them. And he, came from the same parishes as I do, and there is there are these most silent people in Finland. And after a few hours, one of his friends called me and uh, asked, is he sick or something? I said, he does not speak. Of course, he did not speak. And everybody knows Jimmy Wright and the most famous Formula One driver uh, who has had really several problems with, uh, with the media. The press has been trying to ask something about after the races and uh, the journalist is asking uh, Mr. Reagan and what do you think after this race? After this race, he might just won the Monza. Uh, and the writer is. Although all the Finnish people know what this means, the uh, books like this, it means uh, do you really need to ask that question? <laughs> So what is the connection between Scotland and Finland? In the beginning of the 19th century, we had no uh, industry at all, basically. But there was no industry. Everything was made by hand with, with uh, independent uh, people living on the countryside. All, all the country houses were very independent uh, industrial units making everything from shoes to uh, food to clothing and so on. Something moved, uh, changed rapidly. Up to the 1809, we belonged to the Kingdom of Sweden and our uh, task was to produce raw material, materials to Swedish industry. And uh, that's why, uh, in fact, Sweden did not need or they did not want Finnish industry to be developed, to be uh, challenging, uh, sorry, flourishing Swedish industry. 
but because of the Napoleonic Wars, they became to be a grand duchy in the Empire of Russia in 1812. And Russia needed Western technology, and also they needed iron. There is no iron mines on the uh, European side of Russia. So it is a huge modern uh, society nowadays, and they do not have iron, they do not have copper, only in Ural Mountains and east of that. And they thought that near the city of Tampere, or the, or the little town of Tampere, there is the largest iron ore in the world. This is how the Tampere looked like before the industrial, time of industrial race. The other alternative would have been this. This is the Swedish kingdom during the 17th century. And even nowadays, when we are part of the European Union, this map pops out every now and then. They are asking why we not uh, create the money of our own Estonians and Swedes, perhaps Norwegians. So, but uh, somehow it has never worked. This uh, cooperation works during the times of crisis, like during the Second World War, but not during the time of peace. We have been looking something else. Also, the Norwegian people have been looking something else. There might be uh, something, uh, but there is a very beautiful word in German language, 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 Gegeneinander Ersetzung, like uh, something, people have something against each other. We might have something against the streets, I don't know. But this has not been working. The Swedish industry, iron industry, copper industry was based on Finnish forestry. Why? Because Sweden had used all their forests when the time came to the 18th century. So the Finland was even in the Swedish kingdom was the only place where you could get firewood that was needed on the processes of mining at that time. And also Sweden was in trouble with Napoleon Bonaparte and uh, the old family of kings in Sweden was thrown away and uh, the family of Bernard Roth came into the power. Nowadays Karl the 16th Gustav is Bernard Roth. His, his, uh, his ancestor was a general of Napoleon. He does not belong to the old families of uh, Nordic countries. And in Sweden, they believe that domestic technology is purely unnecessary in Finland. This is the, what we really had. This picture is uh, behind my backyard in my village scale called near the town of Porto in southern Finland. This is the largest ski factory in Finland in 1930s. So here you can see sort, sort of the scale of what we have been doing before the industrialization. What happened, really happened in the city of Tampere? That was that little reach beside the river. Uh, this uh, inscription was written by British Thomas Mitchell in 1880s, and here he tells something about the finest, one of the finest industrial cities in the whole northern Europe. There is a really something that's going on. Of course, the industrialization was not an unknown uh, thing for Finnish researchers. Our professor, John Cadolini, wrote already in the beginning of the 19th century that the Finnish economy would really need reindustrialization to get the living standards up and to make the uh, whole population growing and, and uh, general well-being better and so on. These are very <coughs> well-known problems for to all the uh, developing countries now, even nowadays. But we did not have mining, we did not have cotton, we did not have raw materials almost at all. 
no industrial workers, no engineers, no factories. Where could we find people who can deal with these kind of problems? From Scotland, of course. But it do not work so easy. We need some sort of a greater ideology, uh, a big picture of what, what the government is doing. On that time, Mr. Darwin was writing his theories about the uh, uh, developing of the species and so on. Of course, there was this idea of cultural Darwinism too. And there were two ways, three ways to see how the Finnish culture should be developed. The Russians, uh, they thought that the Finnish culture is something that is fading away. And the Swedish culture is something that could be competing. Uh, competing with the Russian culture. So they could be uh, driving the Swedish culture out of the country, uh, replacing it with the Finnish culture, and then automatically the very high level uh, standards of the Russian culture will come over and the language will be changed and everything like that. Our uh, say, yes, we will do this, because the Russians forget one thing. Uh, the Finnish people did not want to be Russians, they wanted to be Finnish, and in fact they knew that this is not going to happen. And when we collect all these ideas together, we get the basic lines what happened to change the number. There was this uh, hopefully process largest iron ore near the city. Power to water winds, and then there was these pilot engineers, James Finlayson, David Cowie, and John Parker, that were borrowed from Scotland, first to St. Petersburg, and then to the other of the tunnel. And on the same time this happened, uh, they bought, of course, the ideas of the modern society of the developing industrial society to Finland and to Tampere. Of course, the uh, government had, had one uh, really good law. They uh, declared the law that the, the industrial plants in Tampere, they did not have to pay taxes before the year 1905. And uh, this made the change to happen. In fact, there is not so many differences if we compare this picture with the street views of Glasgow. And the reason is what we use. We got the model of the modern society from Edinburgh. In fact, we do not know that much of, of the, these pirate engineers. This is the only picture we have of James Finlayson, who was born in Penicus. In 1772, he died in Edinburgh. And uh, he was hired to company to make the mechanical workshop, to make machinery. He was a mechanical engineer, but he failed because he had no raw materials. It was not possible to use the iron from other uh, mine before the 1880s. But Margaret Finlayson was a very strong Scottish woman. And he was able to get the ladies from the nearby uh, villages to come to Tampere and they started the hand weaving of lime. And that was the birth of one of the largest industrial plants in the whole uh, Northern Europe. So something really happened. The people in Tampere, the people who did not speak, the people who drove all the foreigners out of the country, they trusted these Finlaysons. And the Finlaysons founded uh, an asylum for older people, a hospital, uh, street lighting, uh, a private police. He was my grandfather's grandfather, a very scary person. And uh, so this is how the modernization started in, in our country. When coming to 1870s, we really had the largest uh, cotton mill in, in the northern Europe. 
In the first place, the factory was leaving Rheinland, but after the railroad system was built into the Russian Empire, the raw material was brought there from, from the southern part of Russia, and the, the factory is still working. And if you are looking at the finished part and design, you surely will find Mr. Finlayson's name still on the market. Finlayson's uh, massive of was a failure, but there were other ones. David Covey was a Scotsman. We do not know who he is. He came most probably from Edinburgh too, to the city of Turku in 1830s, and he founded the mechanical works. Uh, then came William Crichton, who married Anne Elizabeth Owen, uh, who is a, that is an English family, but William Crichton is born in late in 1827. He's a Scotsman. From these mechanical workshops became the place where they built nowadays these largest cruisers in the world. You surely have seen the pictures and know the fame of these cruisers that are going around the world. <coughs> the basis of, of this technological uh, system is in the Scottish uh, mind. We have these other, other people here, some of Owen. He's an Englishman from Haslin. Uh, he had 18 children. Most of them were girls, and they were married with the industrialists all over Sweden and Finland. So we have this Poland family uh, really behind all our, our, our activities there. John Parker, uh, I did not write that much of him because of John Parker, also we do not know really who he is. He came most probably from Scotland and he founded his uh, <coughs> clothes factory that he's still working. I think it might be a part of the Finlayson factory now. So, this is my last slide of uh, our national philosopher, Johan Wilhelm Snellman, was writing in. 1845, what do we really need when we are changing to society? We do not need uh, that code. We do not need so much money. We need courage because there are these possibilities to use the nature, and this is what we done in, in the early decades of the 19th century with the help of the Scottish people. Thank you.